There were more questions today about what President Trump, Trump knew about alleged Russian involvement in the 2016 election and new details about vulnerabilities in our election systems ahead of this fall's midterms. Nick Schifrin joins me now to discuss what we know. Hello, Nick. So the president's former attorney, former so-called fixer, Michael Cohen, is reportedly saying that the president knew ahead of time, something we hadn't been told before, that this meeting that took place between Donald Trump Jr. and a Russian lawyer uh, in the months leading up to the election in 2016, the president knew about it. The president is saying today it didn't happen. He didn't know. So if it's true, what's the significance of it? This goes to the heart of whether the president knew or did not know that, that Russia wanted to get him elected and was actually meddling in the election. And that is something he specifically has said uh, he did not know at all about. So this meeting took place, as you said, uh, in July 2016. It was between the president's son, uh, Donald Trump Jr., the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, uh, the uh, campaign manager at the time, Paul, Paul Manafort, and a Russian lawyer, Natalia Veselnitskaya. And we now know that Veselnitskaya had connections to senior Russian government officials and Russian intelligence and was offering, quote unquote, dirt on Hillary Clinton. Fast forward to last summer when this meeting was revealed and Donald Trump Jr. specifically said that he never told his father in advance. Uh, and, uh, A lot of people are going to want to know this about your father. Mm -hmm. Did do you tell your father anything about this? No. Uh, it was such a nothing. There was nothing to tell. I mean, I wouldn't have even remembered it until you start scouring through the stuff. It was, it was literally just a wasted 20 minutes, which was a shame. And now, now Cohen is saying that Donald Trump Jr. did let his father know about that meeting in advance. And that could mean the president knew that Russia was trying to help get him elected. And that is something that he has consistently denied. And that direct line between Russian interference and the president has never been proved before. And as we said, the president denied it today in a tweet. Uh, he said, I did not know of the meeting with my with uh, the meeting with my son Don Jr. He goes on in that tweet to accuse Cohen of lying to get out of considerable legal, legal trouble. And, and we should understand that Cohen is in legal trouble. Uh, he's uh, under investigation by the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York. So he does have incentive to play nice with prosecutors. He's not introduced any evidence, and he has said in the past that the president didn't know about this meeting. So right now, this is he said, he said, but at the very least, Judy, it is a big break between the president and uh, a longtime fixer and someone, frankly, who knows a lot about his history. Well, of course, the, the other part of this investigation going on that the, uh, the special prosecutor is looking at is the role Russia played in uh, the 2016 election. The intelligence agencies in this country say that that interference is ongoing right now. And today, yesterday, we got our first confirmation that Russians are still interfering. Yeah, absolutely. So Russian intelligence has always tried to do a few things in the U.S. One, so discord. Two, assist actors who Russia believes it can help. Uh, and three, punish actors who oppose Russia. So in 2016, that meant helping Donald Trump and hacking in order to discredit Hillary Clinton. Now we know the first target, or one of the first targets in 2018 is Senator Claire McCaskill, of Missouri. Now, McCaskill ticks all the boxes of why Russia would target her. One, close with Hillary Clinton. Two, very anti-Donald Trump. Three, she's vulnerable. She's one of 10 uh, Democrats who are running in states that elected Donald Trump. And four, she is vociferously anti-Vladimir Putin. And today, she acknowledged that, yes, her office was hacked and targeted, and she put out this statement. She said that Russia continues to engage in cyber warfare against our democracy. While this attack was not successful, it is outrageous that they think they can get away with this. I will not be intimidated. I've said it before and I will say it again. Putin is a thug and a bully. Now, what happened here? McCaskill staffers received emails that looked like legitimate emails from Microsoft. They were, in fact, fake. They were told to insert their passwords on a separate page. This is called phishing. And last week, Microsoft, the executive Tom Burt, revealed that the very hackers who were doing this were the same hackers tied to Russian intelligence. That organization was, was um, registering fake Microsoft domains and using them for a variety of purposes. And by using fake Microsoft domains, it made the whole scam that they used to infiltrate and control their targets look more legitimate. And this is one technique that worked in 2016, but as we know, this time it didn't work, but it does prove that Russia continues its efforts uh, to, uh, to hack and, and influence the 2018 election. 
So finally, quickly, Nick, uh, we know that on Monday, connected to all this, the president's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, goes on trial. What should we be looking for? So this is the first court test for special counsel Robert Mueller. He's accused Manafort of making millions as an unregistered agent of Ukraine, hiding the money, laundering it into the U.S., and then lying about it to the FBI. Manafort's denied any wrongdoing. Uh, Mueller says he'll have about 35 witnesses, including Rick Gates, uh, Manafort's former business partner. And again, this is not about Russia. This is not even about the president himself, but the special counsel is putting pressure uh, on Manafort, hoping perhaps in the future that he'll provide some information on the larger investigation. Because he worked so closely with uh, President Trump. Absolutely. Nick Schifrin, thank you very much. Thank you.